Jacko potato, a Jacko tomato. small business called Spooks and Spanks where I make soap and all sorts of bath and body goodies with always a little bit of a Halloween-y little tinge to it because if I can make things weird I will remember that other time where I made a real watermelon watermelon soap and I created the single worst watermelon disaster in my soap making career uh, yes that that happened well, today I wanted to try something new. I have a market coming and it's called Summerween. I wanted to have a watermelon soap. It was that or I wouldn't participate in the Summerween market. So I thought, let's just make it out of melt and pour. But I'm gonna be using a detergent-free melt and pour soap base. I have been using melt and pour in previous projects, but I've never actually attempted to create a pretty design out of melt and pour. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get to making some watermelon soap. Hey now, hey now, I'm back with my soap base. I'm back. I'm gonna put my gloves on, but first of all, I wanted to show you my nails. These are press-on nails. I find them very useful because I have anxiety and I have a tendency of hurting my skin <laughs> with my <laughs> regular nails or uh, picking at acne and such um, repetitively and making scars out of them. So press-on nails have been a literal lifesaver <laughs> for me. My friend Annie Seahorse Beauty makes them for me and I even have a code for you if ever you wanted to give them a try. Saves you $7 off of your own custom press-on nails. You can even get these ones if you want. Every time that she sends me my nails, my jaw drops. These videos in which I make soap, they are test batches, but if they do succeed, I will be selling these. But this melt and pour soap base is a detergent free soap base, which means it contains lye, but it already has been saponified. So that means that you, you don't have to be scared of hurting or burning yourself with this soap base. It's already been cured. You can, as soon as it's pulled out of the mold, you can start selling it if you'd like, which is honestly one of the greatest things about Melt and Pour for small businesses. And it's also just as good for your skin. It has cocoa butter, it has shea butter, and mango butter. All some good nourishing ingredients for your skin. And what I like to do for this is to chop it up into little squares. You can melt it either in the microwave or melt it on a double boiler. I do it in the microwave in small bursts because it's quicker that way for me. But if you wanna have better control over the temperature, do it on a double boiler. You really don't wanna boil it. If it starts boiling, then you have more of a chance that it might create glycerin beads. Some people call it soap sweat and I hate that term with a passion Ugh. brother Ugh. because melt and pour soap has a large amount of glycerin in it and glycerin is a humectant meaning that it draws moisture to it so the ambient moisture that the air contains is uh, drawn to the soap so that's why sometimes you'll find some glycerin beads on the top of your soap when it's done. So what's recommended is as soon as your soap is hardened and you've unmolded it to package it up. You can put it in a biodegradable shrink wrap or a paper like I do and that way glycerin beads won't be so likely to form. It's also not much of a problem if ever that does happen. It's not gonna affect the stability of your product or anything like that. You just might have questions as to why is my soap sweating? <laughs> this is 62 ounces of my detergent-free melt and pour soap base, which is this was this which is who <laughs> which is just enough for me to fill one of my soap molds that I typically use. So let me come back and I'll have all this wonderful goodness all melted up and ready to do something with. Why did that start playing? That's weird. That was really strange. <laughs> all of a sudden my TV started playing. Sophia, stop possessing my TV. All right, I melted this. It took about five minutes um, with bursts of one minute. Let me put my fragrance in. 
And I'm sure that you're gonna ask me if it's the same fragrance that caused the issue last time with my watermelon soap. It is, but because this is a melt and pour soap and that there is no unsaponified lye involved, I'm really not worried about it creating any mess like it did last time. Unfortunately, in the soap making community, a lot of people have a lot of smack to talk about melt and pour soap, but honestly, I can see the appeal of it and I don't think it's any worse or any better than cold process soap. It just has less cure time and it's less dangerous to use. The reason why I do some melt and pour and I do some cold process soap is that it, it behaves differently. So depending on what I want for my soap design, I will probably, maybe, preferably do one over the other. For our base color, our rind, I want two different shades of green, like I did in that other video. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour off just a little bit like this, and it smells amazing, absolutely amazing. Let me go ahead and put some mica color in here, mica in here, and some mica in here. And I'm gonna put a little bit of charcoal in one of them, just to make a darker green, just a little dusting like so mixy mixy let's see what this darker green looks like if you feel like you are you're struggling with the dispersion of your micas is um disperse it first in just a tiny little bit of oil if you're putting it in oil though you will want to be sure that you're not exceeding the maximum weight of oil that you can add in your melt and pour soap base because if you add too much um, additives such as oils it will probably hinder the foaming activity of your soap and I'm waiting for these two colors to be a little bit on the gloopier side so that I can create more definition with the colors and we're already there I'm going to create some thinner some thin lines like this and I'm gonna pour some of these other this other color like this I'm trying to create some definition when it becomes like stringy <laughs> that means that your soap is getting cool so if you feel like it's too gloopy for your for your design you can always remelt it in your microwave for a few seconds which I will be doing because right now it's almost unpourable let me just spritz this with a little bit of rubbing alcohol to pierce whatever bubbles there are. These have uh, just been in the microwave for like 10 seconds, just enough for it to be pourable. I poured a little bit on the side right here. Because it's melt and pour, this is already solidified, so I could probably just peel this right off so that it doesn't show up on the side of my design. There you go. And it's gone. Let me just take this soap that I put to the side, pour it in here. Don't want too much. The side of this has congealed up that word gives me the ick so let me go and melt this and it'll melt the side a little bit and let's see what the color looks like after that it has spent 10 seconds in the microwave it got the sides to melt a little bit thus colored my inner part of the rind to a perfect shade of green always spritz the top of your previous layer that's gonna help the layer that you're pouring stick to the previous layer in it goes like so just how easy is that i hope that i say that it's easy and that it actually turns out good the phone's ringing all right i have a customer coming over to pick up their order so i'm gonna let this congeal up <laughs> i'll spritz it with some rubbing alcohol to pop the bubbles on the top how about we mix our pinkish reddish color in here mix it in see what it looks like all of my pigment is nice and incorporated in there and i want to try and add some poppy seeds in there hopefully they don't all sink to the bottom if they do sink to the bottom i'd be really really sad but some poppy seeds in there will make it so cute and exfoliating too that's good i can see that there's poppy seeds at the bottom at the middle at the top and it's just perfect i'll put my ladle right here and i'll pour this on top of it just to be sure, whoops, oh no, wait, 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 wait. Spritz this with rubbing alcohol first. There you go, okay. 
Okay, okay, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Let's try again. Do this like this, just so that we don't break the layer underneath. And I'm pouring all the way up to the top. Go ahead and tell me how unsatisfying these poppy seeds look in my pink mixture. Go ahead. I dare ya. This is so cute. <laughs> I have a little bit extra. I think I brought too many molds, but better too much than not enough. I'll let this sit right here and I'll be right back with the magic of cinema to unmold these guys and I'll cut them up for you guys. Okay, see you soon. It's been a literally, literally two hours. Yeah, that's all you need for you to be able to unmold a melt and pour soap. It's still a little bit warm at the bottom. I can feel it on my cold dead hands. This is what I mean in those, uh, in those videos when I keep telling you, oh, try and remove that leak that happened on the side. This is why. It's not the end of the, pro the, the world either. It's not a gigantic problem. But you know, if you can remove it, just try to. It's so cute. I want to cut it. Do you want to cut it? Okay, okay. Okay, I'll be right back. Here is Baby Smurf, my dear soap cutter. Let's cut a little sliver off of the front. Oh, oh, so cute already. Are you ready for it? <laughs> Yay, I'm happy this was successful. <laughs> oh my gosh, camera's shaking. That's how happy I am. Look at how cute, it's adorable. How about we cut another one? Another one. Another one. The relief of it actually looking good <laughs> and um, for it not to be an entire disaster. It smells absolutely delicious, just like demon gummies. I want to stamp these with a special stamp that we 3D printed at home and I'm very excited to show you what the stamp looks like. This is adorable. The thing with melt and pour soap is that you can't put a fresh fruit like watermelon in it. You can put watermelon extract, which would be an actually great idea for me to do next time that I make this soap bar. Watermelon actually helps boost collagen and collagen helps you retain skin elasticity and skin health. So I'm gonna finish cutting this bar up and I'll come back to show you how I stamp my soap. Back with some very cute soapy soapy. Soapy soapy is so cutie. Soapy soapy going to get stampy stampy look at this stamp yes i couldn't do couldn't do a watermelon soap without giving it a bit of a halloween touch to it you know me i'm sorry if the camera shakes a bit but i have to stamp so hard for it to be able to make a bit of a design just look I'm actually in love with this soap stamp. I'm going to be remaking a few more batches. I'm pretty sure they're gonna sell out at Summerween. I also wanna bring some to Comic-Con and a Takiton. <laughs> Try and package them up as soon as possible, unless you want them to start sweating. <laughs> There was no chance of me making a summer soap without making it look at least a little bit Halloween-y. <laughs> I think soap stamping is really one of the easiest ways to make a soap stand out from the crowd. There are some printers that are on the cheaper side, so if you're a soap maker and you're looking to make some soap stamps like these, I recommend maybe getting a 3D printer so that you can make your own designs and start 3D printing all of your soap stamps. To me, it's really like one of the easiest ways to personalize a design that has been made countless of times. I mean, there isn't a soap maker who hasn't at least tried to make a watermelon soap. I'm very pleased with this. It barely even looks like it's melt and pour soap. Nobody would even know if I didn't tell them because it's like cold process soap. It's detergent free, which means it's basically a cold process soap, but it's been cured already. That's done with. I'm honestly thinking about making more like cold process melt and pour soaps. I also really love how the rind has come out. It's just so, so perfect. I am calling this soap Jack O Melon. Get it? Jack O Lantern, but watermelon. Jack O Melon smells like watermelon and citrus and will be available on the 4th of July at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That is all for today, my dear friends. I hope that you enjoyed the making of Jack O Melon. And uh, if you did, please like and subscribe to my page. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you stay aware of when I have new videos coming up. Let me know down in the comments how you like this design and what other designs I should attempt. Now that I'm a jacko melon soap i kind of feel like making a jacko kiwi a jacko pineapple 
a Jacko potato, a Jacko tomato. I hope to see you in the next spooky soap making video. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you next time. Bye.